Here with our friend J.D. Vance, the next vice president of the United States, God willing. J.D. Vance, how are you, sir? Good, Mark. How are you? I'm very, very well. You really have found your footing here. I mean, you came under brutal assault. It's still ongoing, but you're really kicking back, pushing back. I think that's fantastic. Um, They're trying to turn you into Kamala Harris and her into you, and it's not working. You know, this convention, (laughs) J.D., this convention is depressing. I don't know what they talk about joy. First of all, all they ever do is attack Trump. And they really don't have a program that the American people support. And I want to hit a few of these subjects with you, if I might. In 1924, the Ku Klux Klan had a big presence at the Democrat convention. And they had an influence on the Democrat Party. A hundred years later, the supporters of Hamas, not Palestinian peace, Hamas, with Hezbollah flags and Hamas flags, are stirring and swirling all around this convention. And they have individuals at that convention, Bernie Sanders, AOC, many, many others, who are sympathetic to their cause and to these people. Isn't this a complete and utter disgrace? Yeah, it is, Mark. And it also shows how the Democrats, because of the nature of their political coalition, have had to sell their souls to the devil here. Um, They they know that they can't win the presidency without Michigan. And unfortunately, a lot of the voters in Michigan the Democrats need um, are expressing explicitly pro-Hamas sympathies. And so you have Democrats doing exactly the same thing. And we used to have a country where on some of the big issues, of course, Democrats and Republicans disagreed about tax rates and regulatory policy. But at least on the very big issues, we could sort of say, well, of course, we're pro-Israel. We're anti-terrorist. We like people who live in peace and harmony. We don't like people who you know, attack their neighbors and kill innocent people. Just the basic stuff we could all agree on. And now, unfortunately, the Democratic Party has thrown in with the radicals. It really is a disgrace. And I think that whether you're Jewish or non-Jewish, pro-Israel, uh, whatever your sort of background in this is, you should be looking at the Democratic Party and saying, these people have completely divorced themselves from common sense. Even if I disagree with Republicans or Donald Trump or J.D. Vance on a given issue, don't we just want to get back to basic common sense? Mm-hmm. And that's a very good point. And why would Kamala Harris be meeting secretly with the mayor of Dearborn, Michigan, who is apparently anti-Israel, if not flat-out anti-Semitic? She's met with him secretly. Do you think a presidential candidate should conduct herself this way? She wouldn't meet with Net- talk, uh, sit when Netanyahu was speaking, but she meets secretly with this extremist, radical mayor of Dearborn, Michigan? Yeah, and like you said, Tim Waltz has met with this uh, really radical pro-Hamas figure. There, there are all of these hidden, secretive meetings Democrats are having with people where they know polite, civilized society would be repulsed if it was out there. And they're trying to do it in secret because, again, they know that they need this sort of small segment of the pro-Hamas wing of the Democratic Party in order to have a chance of winning some of these major states. And it's just, you know, look, don't make political allies with people who, who force you to get in bed with Hamas. You're eventually going to regret it. And it's, it's funny, you know, Mark, just on the policy, right? Kamala Harris's entire argument is that we want to limit civilian casualties. Well, of course, every single person would agree that we want to limit civilian casualties. The way to do that is to give Israel the precision weapons it needs to end the war, get this thing over with, destroy Hamas, and rebuild the Abraham Accords peace process that will provide the regional counterbalance to Iran. Her explicit policy here prolongs the war, makes Israel weaker, kills civilians, and empowers Iran. It's like a lose-lose-lose proposition, but like so much of Kamala Harris's policy, it doesn't actually make sense unless you recognize it's all about political pandering. Now, J.D. Vance, uh, law and order. They're lying about crime. Uh, John Lott's written brilliantly about this. They're playing with the statistics. Uh, These cities, especially, but other places too, but these cities are extremely dangerous. We've never seen carjacking like we see now. They're having their convention in Chicago, which is the murder, I believe it's the murder capital of the United States. Uh, Crime is completely out of control. We see these films over and over again about L.A., San Francisco, Sacramento, what's going on as a result, by the way, of Kamala Harris's policies. 
And then they want us to believe that we shouldn't see what we see. It's like when, when Biden was shuffling around, don't believe he has dementia. And Harris, don't believe she's not as smart as she pretends to be. And all this crime isn't really happening. What do they want us to believe? A big lie in order to get elected? Oh, no, that's exactly right, Mark. They're trying to lie with statistics when if you actually know what you're looking at, you realize how disgraceful and how ridiculous it is. Uh, Three really important points about this alleged drop in violent crime that Kamala Harris says is all because of her policies. Number one, you're starting from a baseline where in 2021, the first full year of her vice presidency, we had a massive horrible increase in violent crime. So even if you say it's lower than it was in 2021, it's lower from a really high baseline of violence. The number two thing, Mark, you have to remember is a lot of local police departments aren't even reporting their crime statistics to the FBI anymore. And so we're artificially saying that unreported crime is the absence of crime. And what it actually is, is evidence that our police departments are overwhelmed. You talk, I was in Kenosha, Wisconsin today with local law enforcement. You talk to local law enforcement, they know that the crime and public safety problem is out of control. Final point on this, Mark, is one of the hallmarks of a first world country is what percent of violent crime goes unsolved. If you get assaulted or, God forbid, killed, what are the odds that they're going to find the person who committed crime against you? In the United States right now, it's about a one in three chance. That is third world level statistics, something totally unacceptable, something that's gotten way worse under the leadership of Kamala Harris. And it is hysterical, Mark, if it wasn't so sad, that they're trying to lie about Kamala's record as a prosecutor. She was a prosecutor in San Francisco, one of the most beautiful and most prosperous cities in the entire United States, which was destroyed by her leadership and the people like her. This is not a record to brag on. It's a record to be ashamed of. And I think that, you know, President Trump and I are going to keep on asking the American people, do you want our cities to all look like San Francisco and Chicago? Because that's exactly what Kamala Harris is trying to do. You know, J.D. Vance, I'd like to talk about gun control and these weapons and so forth. Do we know how many guns are coming across that open border illegally? It must be an enormous number of illegal guns coming across the border. I'm not talking about law-abiding Americans who buy weapons. Look, I've got six or seven of them myself. That's not my point. My point is they like to talk about gun control, but open borders not only brings fentanyl, which is bad enough, and the Venezuelan crimes and MS-13 and God knows what, it brings weapons across the border. Are they even tracking that? That's a very good point. And no, we're not really tracking it, uh, Mark, in part because law enforcement is so overwhelmed. But I think, you know, you and me, we're both pro-Second Amendment people. We want Americans to have the rights the Constitution protects. And we really have to separate here Americans having law-abiding rights to own firearms, which, of course, is very important, is, is a totally different issue from the gun running that the cartels are doing, empowering some of the worst criminal gangs in the world with illegal firearms. Uh, This is really a huge danger to our communities, and it's one of the reasons why, again, we have elevated rates of violent crime, is these drug cartels are getting rich by selling illegal firearms, but of course they're making our, 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 our citizens less safe in the process. And it really is unbelievable that the Democrats at the very moment that they're empowering the drug cartels are trying to take firearms away from law-abiding citizens. It's like they don't want the police to defend you. They don't want you to be able to defend yourself. And they want to empower the drug cartels to get rich through the drug and, and gun running crimes. I mean, it's, it's, it's just crazy. But again, they've become so divorced from common sense because a, a small segment of Democratic Party activists have gotten themselves persuaded that all law enforcement is inherently bad or inherently racist. And Americans are now living with the consequences. And of course, it's well known that she contributed to these groups uh, that paid for bail for people to get out, including one individual who went and committed murder. Um, and again, the media, the media is so bad. We can talk about it. They're not going to change their ways. Uh, it's a Praetorian Guard media. They will protect her. They will cover up for her as much as they did for Biden until they wanted to broom him out. But conversely, the way they treat you and the way they treat President Trump is so disgusting. Don't you think that's why the American people have a very low regard for the media? And maybe the media will not have the influence that it thinks it does. Because, look, three or four weeks, they've been on this honeymoon. They've gotten billions of dollars of free in-kind contribution. 
and it's pretty much a neck and neck race. She's not jumping way ahead. No, she's not. And and I think Mark actually, if you trust the the what the Democrats are saying behind closed doors, and if you trust, of course, our internal data, I think that right now Donald Trump and I would win. And we just have to keep on fighting and keep on persevering, and that's what we're going to do, right? Run through the finish line. Don't take a single vote for granted. But I think we're going to win this race, and I, I feel very confident about it. it. It's funny. The media has lost so much prestige and so much trust from the American people. I mean, if you look at their approval ratings, people trust the media much less than they trust Congress or any other institution in our country, and it's because the media is so disgraceful. Now, you're never going to hear me whine about this, Mark, because I signed up for it. As, as Harry Truman once said, if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. But I, I do think that it's a huge disservice to the American people. And, you know, Kamala Harris, I mean, she wants to be the president of the United States. She's terrified of a friendly media interview from a CNN reporter, and she wants to sit in a private room with Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin and the leaders from some of the most powerful and adversarial countries in the world. This is really a disgrace. Like, what kind of a person runs from a friendly press in her own country and, and, and thinks that she can lead the United States of America in these troubled times? It's crazy, actually. I think it says much more about Kamala Harris than it does even about the American media, as disgraceful as the media's conduct has been. No, I think you're right. In a uh, country like this, we pride ourselves on small-D democracy, on voting. But we, the people, we have a right to vote to know what the hell we're voting for or against. We have a right to know. Yes. She can't keep all her plans secret. You know, to the extent they're out there through, through clips, that's great. But she may have other plans that are equally, you know, crazy. And uh, she keeps them to themselves. Look at this guy, Tim Walls. You know him. You see what he is. She picks the most radical crackpot governor in the entire country. They vetted him. They knew what he had these issues, and they didn't care. Isn't that a reflection on Kamala Harris, too? Uh, it absolutely is. It says that she bends the knee to the far left, Mark, and that's what she's done. I mean, look, she supported a ban on fracking, a ban on offshore drilling. Uh, she supported the policies that raise the price of food, that raise mortgage interest rates. She wants America to unilaterally disarm against some of our enemies. She wants to defund the police. I mean, you just go down the list of policies, and this is why she's running from a media interview, Mark, is, is you're exactly right. If the American people had to see Kamala Harris defend why she wanted to destroy local police departments or defend why she wanted to destroy American energy and raise the cost of electricity and gasoline, they wouldn't vote for her. So she's trying to run this campaign from the basement. But you're right. Every time she does speak or act, like with the selection of Tim Waltz, she reveals that she is a far-left radical. And you know, Tim Waltz, Mark, I have to say, just some bizarre stuff, right? Who mm. lies about deploying to a combat zone when they haven't? Uh, this came out today that Tim Waltz has been saying that he had children through IVF. Turns out that was a lie. I mean, I, you know, I, I have friends who have Sick. beautiful kids who are born, born via IVF. Why lie about it? I mean, who does mm. that? I just don't even be, I can't even understand the sort of person who says, my baby came about through IVF, but that was a lie. And we have to ask ourselves, do we want a person who lies about things like that so close to the Oval Office? Certainly not. And importantly, if Kamala Harris chooses a person like that to be her running mate, what does it say about her character and her judgment? I think it says that she's not fit to be president. Well, you're doing a great job out there. You're duking it out. You're engaging. You're getting the issues out there. We're very proud of you here. And you're welcome back anytime, J.D. Vance. Thanks, Mark. I really appreciate it, man. All right, be safe out there. God bless. He's a good man. You can see. He's very sharp. He's engaged. He worked his way up the ladder. He's not as they seek to portray him. He's extremely patriotic. He's pro-Israel. He's pro-defense. He's pro-cop. He wants a secure border. Wow, he must be controversial. 